Hi, welcome everyone to our Yoga for Everybody session today. My name is Skyla Ramirez. Let's get started by lying down on our backs with a supine warm up. So let's warm up the spine, lying down with our knees bent and our feet on the floor. Go ahead and place both hands on your belly. And let's just start to monitor the rhythm of the breath. So as we sit or lie down with the hands on the belly, noticing the rise and fall of your stomach with every inhale and exhale. So we're practicing what we call a belly breath, or this is also known as diaphragmatic breathing with the body. Remembering as long as we're breathing, we are doing yoga. The breath is the foundation for our entire practice. As you inhale, start to count the breath, inhaling one, two, three, Exhaling, three, two, one. Inhaling in through the nose as much as possible. Exhaling from the mouth, keeping the lips together for the next few exhales, noticing how the breath moves up from the throat and it's going to lead out from the nasal passages. There are bits of the breath that are going to be held by the body and as those bits of the breath are held, you'll have a little bit more warmth in the body. Inhaling in through the nose, counting to three. Exhaling, lips stay together. Exhaling from the throat, perhaps becoming aware of a heat that the body is able to hold on to. And then a little bit of that breath is released out from the nasal passages. Let's take at least a quiet minute to pace the breath so that we create an equal ratio on the inhale and the exhale, counting to three as you inhale. And then three, two, one, maybe a pause after the exhale. Let's try this for about a quiet minute. You can always keep that small pause after the inhale and maybe a longer pause after the exhale as we continue to choreograph some movement with our breath. Let's first draw our left knee in towards the chest and hold on behind the legs, finding the breath as we inhale. Let the knee press a little bit away from the body so that we're able to open up the lowest part of the lungs. As we exhale, the lungs deflate, the belly comes in. Let's pull the knee and the thigh straight in towards the stomach. You may even want to slightly angle your knee in towards the center of the chest. That way we're able to get a little more pressure into that lower abdomen and into the crease of that hip and upper thigh area. When you're ready, slowly release the leg. Let's establish a nice full inhalation. Exhale, let that right leg come up, wrapping the hands behind the thigh. As we inhale, we allow that knee to move away from the body, making space for the belly to move with our breath. And as we exhale, we slowly draw the knee in, pressing the thigh up against the abdomen, creating that little bit of pressure and that compression into the hip and the pelvis region. When you're ready, slowly release that leg. From here, let's take the arms up and overhead, 
stretching the muscles that connect to the sides of the chest and the breast region under the ribs, all the way along the trunk of the body. Inhale, reach dynamically with both arms straight back behind you. If you're noticing any pain in your shoulders, maybe keep the hands reaching towards the sky or maybe just halfway back. The range of motion here is relevant to your body's comfort. The more we go back with the arms, the more pressure we're putting into that shoulder joint. When you're ready, let's lower both hands down beside our hips, pressing the palms down beside us. We'll anchor that energy in the heart and in the chest. Let the knees sway a little bit left and right. Thinking about maybe what is familiar, where is your maximum range of motion and just work maybe within half of that familiar space. So what happens if you just monitor that movement and just ease up on it? So maybe you just practice a little moderation with this today, giving our bodies an ample amount of time to interpret and digest the sensations that come with just half of your effort in this twist. It might even feel more challenging since we have to stop ourselves at that halfway point. There's less inertia, there's less momentum involved, more awareness. Now let that movement grow. So let the knees sway over a little more, but again, don't go into that maximum range of motion. You're just stopping before your hips completely rotate from the floor. Exhaling as you twist, inhaling one, two, three, exhaling three, two, one, and just continuing to let those knees sway left and right. Noticing which side feels more comfortable, let the knees sway all the way over to one side. Add in the arms, twisting in the opposite direction feeling a bit more rotation, maybe even a pull through the trunk of the body. Let's inhale knees and hands through center, letting the knees go to the other side, the arms extending out, swiveling at the waist, breathing into those places where there is the least resistance. Let's bring it to center. Exhale, hug both knees into the chest, hold on behind the thighs, take the knees out wide and stretch the legs up, push through your heels, flattening through the soles of the feet, creating a bit more length through the backs of the legs, encouraging a little more strength and stabilization in the kneecaps. Go ahead and wiggle your toes, circle out the ankles. When you're ready, Draw the knees in towards your shoulders and armpits for a big stretch of the inner thigh. And you can let your tailbone roll off the floor a little bit. This is creating a contraction in the belly. It's gonna pull the navel into the spine and it will flatten the spine, the back into the earth. When you're ready, slowly release. Let's allow the tailbone and the sacrum to be neutral on the floor. Bring the knees together to the width of your hips. Let's lower both feet, keeping those knees bent for a bridge flow. Press the palms down, inhale, lift up the hips. Hold it there with a glute squeeze. On the exhale, release the glutes and let the arms fly overhead. Inhaling, hips are rising, hands pressing into the earth. The more we push down into our arms, the more we may be able to lift those hips. Exhale, relax the spine and let the arms go overhead. Inhaling, hips up. Engaging the arms, engaging the hands. Hasta Bandha, the hand lock. Exhale, relax. Relax the hips and pelvis. Keep the hips down on the ground. Go ahead and bring both hands to the floor. And let's go ahead and roll over onto one side into our sideline constructive resting pose. Let's find the breath in the back of the body, breathing as low as possible into the hips and the low back. 
It's okay if that breath rises along the sides of your spine, maybe even up behind the heart, but we are trying to keep it primarily in the lower back and maybe just behind your belly button. When you're ready, use your top arm down onto the floor. Let's take our time to slowly press up and find all fours position for cat and cow flow. From here, let's untuck our back toes. See that the knees are at the width of the hips or the pelvis bones. And we also want to make sure that the spacing of the feet is the same as the spacing in your knees. So however far apart the knees are, hip and pelvis width, exact same distance when we draw a line straight back to our feet. From here, let's bend the elbows a little bit. And as you do, roll those elbows back so that a bent elbow would be facing your knees and thighs. Let's straighten out through our arms, press into the inner part of your palm by the index finger and thumb for support. Let the hips hinge back and drop your belly. Let's look forward for cow pose, inhaling into the center of the chest. And then exhale, just gently tuck the tailbone under and pull up through your navel and spine, rounding the spine. Let's hang the head for cat. Inhaling in through the nose. Let's keep the lips together as we exhale from the throat. Again, sensing that the breath moves just a bit of it out from your nostrils. And some of the breath is retained, holding on to a little bit of heat. Inhaling, lips together, exhale. Try maybe two or three more, just simply quietly monitoring the breath matched up to the movement. Let's eventually hold ourselves in cow pose. And while we're here, we'll walk the hands forward, maybe just two or three inches in front of the body. So we're just beginning to have a little bit more shoulder flexion, which means we're going to be strengthening the shoulder muscles while we're weight bearing to add in a little more of that strengthening of the shoulder muscle. Push the hips back. And as you do, the armpits are opening sides of the waist are stretching, we might let the hips come all the way down onto the heels, or you can keep those hips up to prevent pain in the shoulders. You might want to have the hips touching the heels and you can pull the arms back. This is a way to protect the rotator cuff in cases of frozen shoulder. No matter where you are for your child's pose expression today, Breathe into the low back and maybe again, monitor that breath, keeping it as low as possible in the body. Breathing into that space just behind your belly button, allowing the lungs to expand in this place, exaggerating just sensations of pressure into the kidneys, the adrenal glands, and into the lower part of the back and spine. Keeping some stillness behind the heart space, <clears throat> and keeping some stillness under your shoulder blades. When you're ready, you can extend the arms out. Option to find downward facing dog or maybe dolphin pose. So dolphin pose is where you would come forward, bring your elbows onto the ground and lace the fingers. From here, you can relax the head, tuck the toes and lift the hips and knees. And then your head is hanging loose. So my head is not touching the floor in dolphin. My base of support is my elbows and my forearms. We can always bend the knees more in an effort to protect the low back. You can even put one knee down and lift one knee up to just start to practice the mechanics of the pose. Of course, there is down dog where the hands stay on the floor, elbows lengthened out, legs are straight, and we suspend ourselves in an inverted V. Now, no matter where you are, try a little 
alternating heel press. We call this walk the dog. As you alternate that little knee bend and heel press, working just a bit more of a stretch into the back of the legs, more length in the back of the legs. Let's come to a still point so that we're able to look forward. Go ahead and walk the feet towards the hands, finding Uttanasana, forward fold expression. Let's walk our hands up onto the shins or the thighs, supporting the spine in our forward fold, allowing the hips to hinge back, giving a little bit of relief into your low back and spine. Let the hips sway left and right. Eventually bring it into a still point with the body and then slowly walk up, respecting our blood pressure with that slow transition. Let's find our feet at the width of the hips, open up the palms of the hands, spread out your fingers and your toes to establish a strong mountain base. Let's keep the chin down while we lengthen through the crown of the head. And think about engaging the inner thighs as if you're holding a yoga block or a small volleyball between your knees. Try pulling the kneecaps up and then draw the side ribs in for core support. When you're ready, inhale, sweep the arms back and around. Let's press the palms together over the head and pull them through the center, pressing the thumbs into the heart. Inhale, circling again. Palms together overhead, pulling the hands down, tapping the center of the head, sixth chakra, third eye, tapping the center of the chest, fourth chakra, heart energy. Inhale, reaching up and overhead. Exhale, hands to the third eye, hands to the chest. Inhale, circle, open, possibly closing the eyes and just feeling for the energy that we open ourselves to receive on every inhale. Big breath in, drawing in the breath, drawing in prana. Exhale through the center, pressing into the third eye and the heart. One more. Inhale into the nose, exhale from the throat, lips together. Let's meet with our hands at the heart. Unjumping mudra, the seal of physical reverence. Take a moment to breathe in a deep sense of gratitude and appreciation for the physical form. When you're ready, step your left foot back. Let's bend our right knee into a casual warrior one foundation. Inhaling, taking the arms straight up and overhead, keeping the palms pressed together over the crown of the head. You may even want to try lacing your fingers together. And as we lace the fingers together, the left thumb is over the right. Then we can extend the index fingers out. So you're creating almost like a unicorn horn on top of your head, pressing straight up with the palms of the hands, pressing together, lengthening through the elbows. This is called Kali Mudra, Kali keeping that healthy bend in the right knee as we open through the armpits. Keep pushing down into that left heel, push into the inner and outer blades of the feet. On the next inhale, pull up and out of that left armpit and lean a little bit over to the right. So you're creating almost a crescent moon expression with your warrior blood foundation. Let's try turning our head to gaze to the left. Breathing into the upper left lung. Keeping that breath in the upper left lung along the side of your body. You can always position your gaze forward or down to the right. When you're ready, let's bring the arms up and overhead. Exhale, swan diving. Straightening that right leg. Let's flatten our spine. And then allow your chest and your heart to fold over your right leg into pyramid. Pajvatlanasana. Hang your head loose. Allow some softness to move along the sides of your spine and into your right leg. Maybe feeling a lot of dynamic energy in that left leg only. Let's shake the head yes. Then turn it left and right. 
Exhale from your throat. Two more, open the mouth to exhale, big breath in. One more. From here, let's use our hands to walk up the leg, bending that front knee, inhale, arms overhead, traditional warrior one. Turn the palms forward, pull the elbows down, cactus arms with your warrior one. Inhale into the center of the chest, chest expansion, pulling the heart forward and pulling your ribs up. One more big breath in. Exhale, relax. Let's let the hands come down. Step to the top of your mat. Establish your body's strongest expression of mountain pose. Reaching down towards the floor, shoulders pressing away from the ears. Lengthening through the crown of the head while we let the chin bow in, pulling up the kneecaps, pressing the knees and thighs in, and maybe unhinging and softening the knees a little. Holding it here, let's gather the breath three times. Inhale, sweeping the arms up, palms pressed together. Exhale through the center, press to the head, press to the chest. Two more. Inhale. Exhale, coming down, thumbs to the third eye, anya, thumbs to the heart, anahata. One more, inhale, and exhale through the center. Holding it here with the arms out, hands to the chest. Let's take our right foot back in casual stride, conservative with our energy in our warrior one stance, keeping a bend in that left knee. Inhale, bringing the arms straight up over the crown of the head, lacing the fingers, left thumb over right, lengthening just the index finger. So you're making like a horn or a pointer or a laser gun, whatever you might want to call it, extending out through the arms, pointing dynamically with those index fingers, or lunging forward and pulling back, possibly closing the eyes so that we can Feel for that breath that bridges the body and the mind in our yoga practice today. Inhaling into the nose. Lips stay together as we exhale from the throat. Two more. Pressing down strong into that right leg. Let's pull up and out of that right armpit. Leaning a little over to the left, we have that crescent expression through the trunk of the body. Let's look up to the right. You could keep your head at center and just shift the eyes to the right temple or let the head follow with the gaze. Inhaling into that upper right lung, pulling up and out of that right rib and out of your waist. When your body's ready, inhale, bring it through center. Exhale, swan dive, releasing the shoulders and hands to your left leg. Let's straighten that left leg and press the hips back, gently lowering down the chest, draping the trunk of the body over that left leg, keeping a little bend in the left knee so we're able to soften the energy on the left side of the body, then keep pushing back through that right heel, down into the earth. Three exhales, opening the mouth to this time. Inhale through the nose. Exhale, ha. When you're ready, let's walk the hands up onto the left leg. Lengthen through the spine, easy does it as we slowly bring our arms up, establishing a strong traditional warrior one posture, reaching up, imagine you're holding on to a bowling, bowling ball or a beach ball. One big inhale, 
Exhale, palms forward, pull the elbows down, drawing the elbows in, pinching through the armpits as you continue to lunge forward. Three expanding breaths in your chest. Big inhale into the heart. Exhale, relax. You can exhale with the mouth open or closed. Closing the eyes experiencing the practice rather than witnessing it through the mind's eye. When you're ready, relax your hands down. Let's step forward to establish a strong mountain base. Circle the arms, center the breath, palms together, exhale through the center. Connect the mind to the heart. Two more, inhale, connecting mind to heart. Last one. Meeting with our hands at the heart. Let's step our feet out just to the width of the pelvis or the hips. We're taking our weight over into the right leg, lifting the left leg up. If you want, you might want to take that leg a little bit out to the side, almost like a dog by a fire hydrant. If you have a wall nearby, maybe put a hand on a wall or a chair. Let's reach down with our left hand, holding on to the outside of our left foot. If that reach is uncomfortable or if that reach is um, maybe even distracting you, you don't have to hold on to the leg. You could keep your hand at your chest or you could reach back and just keep leaning over to that right leg. At some point, we can always experiment with straightening out the trunk of the body, maybe even bringing that leg in so that we have that knee directly under the pelvis and hip. Keeping that right hand possibly on a chair or a wall for support, we can begin to come forward while we're holding on to that leg. Or you're also welcome to experiment with letting go of your prop and extending that right arm forward while you're standing on the right leg. This is Natara Jasana, dancer's pose. Natara Jasana. If you're holding on to that ankle or foot, Press the foot into the hand and now pull the hand into the foot, perhaps creating almost like a bow effect with the left side of the body. Inhale big into the chest and into the left hip. Exhale, slowly release everything out and go ahead and shake off the hips and the legs. To do the other side, let's establish our strong mountain foundation first. Feet may be at the width of the hips. It could be a little wider. Let's shift into the left foot as we take that right leg up and maybe take it out to the side. Again, it's almost like a dog by a fire hydrant type movement. It's an abduction through the thigh. When we abduct or take the leg out like this, we make our ankle visible and maybe even a little more accessible. Let's bend that leg. Perhaps grab on with your right hand to the outside of that right ankle or to the outside of the right foot. From here, saw through that left standing leg. Let's press our foot into the hand and hand into the foot as we begin to open the right side of the body, opening the right hip, standing strong on your left foot. Inhale big into the chest, from the right hip up through the heart. Exhale, option to extend that left arm, taking our hand away from our wall, from our chair, and maybe just sort of testing where the body is today as far as balance goes without leaning into those means of support. Let's try one more big breath, big inhale. And now exhale, let's take our time to slowly release any tension on that leg. Easy does it, letting that leg out, shake it out. Relax the shoulders as well. From here, we are coming down to the floor for a few stretches. This is a good time to grab a pillow or a jacket, maybe even grab a sip of water. Let's come down into a seated position with both of our knees bent. Seeing that the knees are at the width of the pelvis bone. 
You can sit on a really large pillow for this next movement. Any, anything too small might actually create a balance challenge. We are moving into a little bit of core work with boat pose. So you don't wanna be um, teetering on a small uh, perch or prop. You want a lot of support here. From wherever you are, let's take our hands first down behind us. And we're gonna slide the palm of the hands past the hips. The thumbs are grazing past the hips. And we're pressing the palms of the hands into the floor down behind us. Fingertips are facing the feet and the body. As an alternative, if you know that this is hard on your wrist, you are more than welcome to come back down onto your elbows with the palms facing in towards your hips. Coming down to the elbows does not make it easier. It just makes it different. In fact, sometimes when we come down to the elbows, it's harder on the shoulders, but easier on the wrist. I will say, if you always do it one way, try it a different way today, just for the sake of curiosity. Wherever you are today, let's take our time to slowly lift one leg off the floor, keeping our toe pointed, and then lift the other leg off the floor. And we might want to keep the knees deeply bent so that the toes are just lightly hovering over the floor. Or we may attempt to lengthen those legs out a little more, seeing that the calves are parallel to the floor. And finally, we could even experiment with straightening one leg at a time, coming into more of a V-sit position with this. The final expression is to find some stability through the trunk of the body and maybe release the hands, bringing the hands behind your thighs or allowing the hands to reach outside your knees or maybe towards your feet. No matter where you go with this, it probably is gonna feel like work. We don't want it to feel like we're having to invest so much energy that it's depleting our energy resources, but we also don't want it to be easy. We need to feel like there's a little bit of effort that goes into this. This is called tapas. This is your ambition energy. Find the breath, big inhale, and exhale. Two more breaths, big inhale, and exhale. One more, inhale, and exhale. Let's bend the knees, touch the toes together. Open the knees up. We counter that with butterfly, relaxing your low back and belly. Exhale, let the spine fold forward. Drop your head, let the chin come in towards the chest. Think about trying to stretch the back of the neck and under the base of the skull. Let your head go left and right a little bit. Try breathing again in through the nose, out from the throat, keeping the lips together. Keeping that breath. Now notice the breath stays in the lower part of the back of the lungs. So only breathing up into that space in the middle back, in through the nose, down to the middle back. Lips stay together, out from the throat, breath leading up through the nasal passages as well. When you're ready, slowly begin to sit up. Let's extend just the left leg straight out and we'll cross that right leg over the left. Let's take our left arm and hook it around the right leg. From here, adding in a gentle twist of the waist towards the right, keeping that right hand close to your body for support. Gently twisting into half lord of the fishes, lengthening through the crown of the head and then turning the head to gaze towards the right stopping at any point where we feel that there may be a strain or pain in the neck. Let's soften the body so that the breath can find those places that are most open. 
Inhale through the nose, exhale from the throat. Let's take our time to slowly unwind the spine, coming to center. From here, extending the right leg, keeping that foot flat, keeping your toes pulling back towards your belly. Let's bend the left knee, cross the left leg over, hook around with the right arm. If this is painful to the hip at all, the right foot can stay on the inside of the leg. It does not have to cross it over. From here, we're sitting tall, just gently bringing that left arm behind us for support to the spine, then slowly swiveling at the waist, the ribs, the shoulders. Last of all, with a tall spine, establish that subtle rotation through your neck and head where you feel like there is a bit of a gaze to the left but there's no strain in the neck. Try softening through the belly, even with the dynamic twist, we can soften through the middle part of the body and then allow the breath to move freely. When your body's ready, slowly bring it around to center. Let's extend both legs straight out, sitting tall in seated stack, pulling your toes back towards the belly. Make sure there's a little pocket of air under the knees. That way we're able to maintain healthy circulation in the legs. Inhaling, bringing the arms up, seated stack, lengthen through the spine, Exhale, swan dive forward. Let your ribs and heart move over the thighs and the knees. We kind of already did this earlier, lying on our backs. We're trying to get the thighs to press onto the belly. Some of us may want to bend the knees more so that we're able to get that compression and that crease above the thigh into the groin and pelvis. Let's bring the hands towards the feet, or you can hold on behind your calves behind the knees, behind the thighs. Draw the chest closer to the thighs, relax your head and neck, and practice that breath again, breathing into the low back, up into the space behind your belly button, maintaining stillness in the heart. When you're ready, slowly come up to safely come down to the floor. Let's bring our hands to one side. Walk your knees over to one side as well. Let's lie down on our sides just for a moment, returning to that position of a constructive rest, side line, letting the spine slowly adapt. Eventually we roll onto our backs. Keeping the knees bent, let's slowly walk the feet out, then let the knees come into touch. And you'll feel the edges of your feet peeling off the floor as we deeply stretch the outer hip and your low back. Let's take the arms out beside us like a T with the palms facing up. Focusing on the breath in the lower pelvis and in that lower belly. Just a little bit of movement, maybe in the ribs or the chest. Most of that breath is going to be really manifesting in your lower pelvis and stomach. 
Inhale through the nose, lips stay together. Exhale from the throat. Listen to the quality of the breath. This is called ujjayi, ujjayi breath, a whispered breath. Stay here a little longer if you're noticing that there's a release in your back or your hips. If you're wanting to experiment with a little, maybe a different stretch for the hips, let's first separate the knees and walk the feet closer together. Lifting up that left foot, we're turning the left knee to the side, placing the left ankle on top of your right thigh, creating a figure four stretch. We can hold it here. Maybe we feel enough sensation opening up that left hip and thigh. If we want maybe a little more openness in that hip, we can lift our right foot away from the floor. And we might even bring both hands around that right thigh. You'll want to take your left hand and kind of like a, kind of like thread through the eye of the needle. You're going to take your left hand and bring it under your left calf, between your thighs, and then wrap it around the right thigh. Using the elbows and shoulders, pulling back with the arms, drawing that right knee and left knee in closer to your chest. Relax the jaw, and in this pose in particular, exhale with your mouth open, really relaxing the jaw. The more we relax the jaw, the more potential there is for us to relax the hips. When you're ready, slowly release that leg. Let's uncross the left, bringing the right knee up, knee out, right ankle over the left thigh, and maybe just hanging out there. Already, this could create a lot of sensation in the hip, in the thigh, maybe even in the back. If you are wanting to create maybe a deeper stretch here, lift the left foot off the floor, Let's take that right hand, and again, like a thread through the eye of the needle, we're gonna take it down and around that left leg. Left hand comes around, using the elbows and the shoulders to draw the knees in closer to your chest. Exhaling from the throat, mouth open, jaw relaxed. Stay here for another breath or two, or release, release whatever your body wants. Let's let those knees sway a little bit left and right. When you're ready, stretch out like a stick. Let's establish some neutral sensations in the body with the legs straight and the arms overhead. Now let your body move in any natural way to prepare you for final relaxation pose. 
you may feel like you need a deeper twist or maybe knees to chest again, maybe knees wide with the feet up, happy baby pose. Let's get ourselves comfortable, work out any type of fidgety movement, any excessive energy, allow that to be expressed through some sort of physical movement. We're returning to the breath that we established in the beginning of our practice. We were lying on our backs, allowing the breath to move from the lower stomach to the middle belly, keeping stillness in the heart, acknowledging any traces of breath in the chest, just acknowledging without judgment. We're not necessarily attempting to control the breath or to impose so much effort onto it as much as we are encouraging the breath to be contained in the lower part of the body, knowing that it, it's gonna rise up if it wants to. Encouraging the breath, not forcing it, encouraging. Breathing in through the nose for the next maybe two or three exhales. Keep the mouth open as we exhale from the throat. Eventually letting the lips touch. Inhale through the nose. Exhale from the throat, shaping the throat as if you were going to say ha or ah without making an audible sound. Instead, allowing that subtle constriction of the throat muscles with the air passing through it to create almost a hollowed sound in the back of the throat. This is, um, again, another characteristic of ujjayi breath. Inhaling in through the nose, the back of the head is relaxed. All muscles in the face are relaxed. Exhaling from the throat as if you were going to say ha or ah. Pausing after the exhale and simply observing what is in that space after the exhale. Maintaining a steadiness with the breath, that steadiness of the breath, encouraging a steadiness, a stillness in the mind space. Keeping that pause after the exhale, tuning into the experience of stillness.
Let's place hands over the belly. Staying deeply aware of the breath. Maybe bringing one hand up over the heart. Maybe taking our peace fingers, take that hand away from the belly and take your peace fingers and press into the center of the forehead while the other hand stays on the chest. Continuing breathing easy, continue with mindfulness of the breath. When you're ready, lay both hands over your heart or over your belly for closing. Let's draw in a deep, unifying breath for the mind and body experience bridged by that breath. And maybe stay here a little longer if your schedule permits. Stay here maybe 10, 15 minutes longer. Maybe go to sleep if you didn't have good sleep last night. I thank you all for joining me today. I hope you all have a fantastic day and rest of your week. Until I see you again, namaste, everybody.